All right, guys, what's up? So in today's video, we're going to be doing another DIY um, studio video. So in case you guys haven't realized in my first video to kind of my videos now, um, my studio changed a lot and it's just my desk. I'm in the same room. I repositioned everything, um, repositioned my speakers, my acoustic panels, and of course all of my gear is now on my desk and my computer and stuff is underneath the desk. So I did some slight adjustments, but the main thing that um, is different is the desk. So I built a new desk. I wanted to have a studio desk that had rack space accessible from the sweet spot. And I just wanted to have a little bit of a wider surface that's also um, not an angled desk or a, an L-shaped desk so that I could fit everything on the same kind of table and be at the right um, distance from my speakers no matter what I'm doing when I'm working. So I built myself a desk. Um, I kind of found some other plans online slash found another guy's video. Um, and I kind of had to decipher the plans, modify them a little bit for the materials that I was able to find. And I just found the video a little bit long for no reason. So I'm going to be doing my own video of my desk, how I decided to build things. I've redrawn the plans completely for you guys. So I hope that all of the measurements are perfectly clear. They're going to be downloadable for you guys. Um, because that was another thing with the last guy's plans is that you kind of just have to hand copy them with, you know, looking at the drawing of the video. So I've drawn up the plans. I've drafted the plans. Super, super easy. I'll flash it over on the screen right now. Um, just kind of showing you the cuts you need to make. Um, the material that we'll go over, it's not essential. You can kind of mix and match whatever you want to do if you think something would be better or if something's not available to you. But the basic, um, you know, list of all the parts and every pieces that I bought um, cost me about five to, I'd say, $650 Canadian. You save a lot of money because any of the studio desks available on the market that have those criteria are you know starting at maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars plus shipping importing and it just gets ridiculous from there for a desk so i built one myself i took videos of me building it the whole way um we'll start way back at the beginning um after i flash those plans we'll start at the beginning and the first step is going to be obviously cutting out the two side panel pieces um and then it's just a simple thing we're going to build the two side racks here and then on top of the side rack, um, you just lay this countertop surface on here. So let's get right into it. You'll see how easy it is if you have basic DIY or, you know, kind of handyman knowledge. So it's really, really easy. You're just going to have a couple cuts to do. Um, the better you are at this kind of stuff, the nicer the finishing will be, of course. So I think anybody will be able to do it with these plans. And if you were planning on getting a new studio desk, I hope this video will help you or inspire you to do it yourself and maybe get you a desk faster because it's a lot less expensive. So if you guys plan on using these plans or if you find the video helpful and you were just curious on building your own studio desk, please just drop me a like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot and I'll be doing a lot more DIY stuff. Um, you'll see in the next couple days, I'll have another video coming of the next DIY project along with some more tutorials. Let's get right into the video and build this desk. Following along with the plans, you can see that we're going to use 3 quarter inch MDF. We're going to cut squares of 35.5 inches by 35.5 inches. And then you can see in step two that we have to make all of these cuts. Once you make those cuts on one piece, you can use this piece uh, as a template to create the next three. You're going to want to make the first one as accurate as possible and then use that and cut um, along the lines that you trace so that your piece is the same size. Once you have all four pieces cut out, this is where you're gonna add the um, cross pieces using two by three. So we need to have an inner spacing of 90, a little over like a 19 and 1 uh, inches inner measurement so that we can put 19 inch rack mount gear. So those pieces are exactly 19 and 1 16th, and we're going to cut out three cross supports using two by three per rack.
this is going to give us the stability that we need and it's going to also hold the pieces together. After you've installed the 2x3, we're going to use 1x8, which is this thin little wood piece that you're going to see now, as just a kind of back support, which is also going to help keep it straight. And I didn't use 2x3 here just for um, the look of it. I wanted it to be kind of like a back panel piece that stops you from being able to see through the rack completely. And it's also going to provide the same level of support and hold the two sides together. So we're just putting two screws um, for each one of these supports for each type. And we're using um, pretty long screws. I believe there were two or even three inch screws. Because we have a three quarter of an inch material, we want to go through that material and then into the actual support by you know, um, a good amount. So, you're going to want to repeat this process to create your two side racks. And once those are done, you're going to have pretty much the supports for your actual desktop finished. So here I am just measuring the inner, um, the inner width to make sure that it's actually uh, 19, 19 inches or 19 inches and 1 16th. And now here I have a bamboo countertop. So you can see in the plans I mark off the size of the, or in the, the parts list that I'll provide, you'll see the size of the bamboo countertop that I bought. And to make it fit with our side racks, we need to cut out the two little back squares um, so that we get the inner section that runs along um, the sides of our racks. So take your time cutting it, it's very, very thick. You're gonna want as straight of a cut as possible. Uh, measure several times, cut once, because this is the most expensive piece. So you want to make sure everything is nice and straight and perfectly measured. Once you cut out, you can see we cut out the two um, back pieces, and now it slots perfectly, and the two pieces that were um, sticking out in the front are providing the support for the actual desktop that your elbows will be sitting on. In this step, I'm sanding the MDF because we're going to apply some primer and some paint to change the color of the board. So you're going to want to repeat the sanding as um, using rough, rougher sandpaper to finer grit sandpaper. And then once that's done, you're going to use a dry piece of cloth or paper towel to wipe away all of the residue and the little sanded particles that you need to get off before applying your primer and then your paint. You want to make sure that all of this is off and loose from the side of your board so that the paint will stick. Here I'm using primer, using an acrylic based primer. You need to be careful not to apply too too much at once because uh, MDF will puff up if it gets too wet. So apply it really really thin and do several coats. I think I did two or three coats of primer. And then it dries really, really fast. So you can do this within, you know, the span of maybe an hour. Give it, give it a, a good 15 minutes to dry, 20 minutes just to be sure. And then you can go ahead and apply another layer of primer right, right away. After that, I took it out and I applied a black paint to it. I used a black, I believe it was an oil-based paint. Um, I applied two or three coats of that. Uh, I sanded any imperfections on the first and second layer, and then the third layer was just to get it as nice as possible. So now we're going to look at this desktop piece that we've cut out. It's made of bamboo, so we're going to use a wood, I'm using a gel wood, uh, wood gel stainer, and I decided to go with black to match the side. So I'm giving it a good stir, and then you're going to want to pour some of the gel out onto your surface and use a brand new rag kind of cloth that's dry, and you're going to spread around this uh, gel stain as much as possible. You don't want to have any excess. You want it to be kind of uh, on the dry side as you're getting to the end of it. And if you're missing any, don't be shy. You can, dry, you can grab some more. It's just... Um, you're going to repeat this process a couple times, so don't worry if it's not too dark after the first one. 
this is black stain and this is after two or three layers of stain here you can see in the video it's not really black it's still kind of a very dark brown but that's the result you're gonna get even using a black stain I guess unless you do um, several several coats more so that's the final stain result now this is a clip I've started to apply clear coat um, just as a protective layer on top of my stain so you can see it's got a bit of a gloss here you can see those little cloudy parts are still some uh, sections that haven't fully dried yet from the clear coat so I did a little side panel which I didn't end up using I was gonna use it as a monitor stand for my computer monitor but uh, that little side piece that you saw so that is the desktop fully um, stained and the side pieces fully painted just assembled sitting on top of each other now we're gonna go to the side rack I bought some little furniture feet here which it says on the back uh, just read what size pilot hole you need and in my case it was one inch deep uh, I can't remember the exact measurement for the the width of the the drill bit but I'm gonna drill four holes with uh, my drill bit taped off at one inch depth and then I'm gonna hammer in the little plastic threading for the feet and I'll screw in these little felt uh, furniture feet this also helps you to level out if your cuts weren't perfectly straight you'll be able to level out your desk um, a little bit more by screwing in and you know changing the height of the furniture feet on uh, on each of these uh, side racks so here I'm just finishing hammering it in put the cab put the hammer down here is the actual furniture feet which is the metal screw part on it it screws right into this and your pilot hole should be deep enough that it goes all the way to the end if you wanted to but in my case I'm gonna leave it out just a little bit and afterwards I adjust them to fit the um, to, uh, to get the right height and the level the desk out a bit more so I bought some rails off of Amazon. These are 10 rack unit rails. You can just buy them empty like that. I bought four because I needed to fill the two rack spaces. I uh, just centered them, just measuring, leaving uh, the same gaps. I left a larger gap at the top because I didn't want a larger unit to hit the back plate there, the back cross support. Anyways, so that's about it. Um, you can see that in the finished picture here that I kind of added a lot more screws you have to use half inch screws because your MDF is only three quarter of an inch and you don't want to push the screw through so you add them every second or third hole just to support all the weight that's going to be in your rack and that about does it for that so after this you can start to assemble your desktop um, your as shown like earlier in the video the desk kind of fits in you just space them out the right uh, distance apart from each other put your desktop on top and you'll see in one of the next pictures I added these two little two by three pieces on the inner sides right there just to support the desk you can add some brackets and fix the desktop down and that's it that's finished and in the studio alright guys so that about wraps up the uh, DIY studio desk build I hope you guys liked it I hope the plans are nice and clear um, I just want to know if you guys are planning on building this uh, do you guys think that it's worth it to build it yourself or do you think the ones that are in stores are a lot nicer um, Anyways, if you guys had any modifications that you guys do, or if you end up building a desk and you build the same one, uh, send me some pictures. I'd love to see what you guys end up doing with these plans and this studio desk build. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. I've got some more studio DIY stuff coming up soon. And I'll be back to the usual tutorials, of course. But uh, at the moment, I'm doing a little bit of DIY stuff. So I figured I might as well document it and post it while I'm upgrading the studio and adding some new pieces in there. So I hope you guys are liking it. If you are, also let me know about that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.